This is episode number 96 of the Homeowner Show. Whether you're DIY or looking to hire, we're here to help you find the best information and options for you and your home. My name is Kevin Hackett, and here with me is Craig Williams. Hello, 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 and welcome to Homeowner Show. We're glad that you could join us for this special episode of the Homeowner Show. It's late at night when we're recording this one, so I'm especially socially lubricated. How are you, Kevin? <laughs> I don't know what to say to that. Uh, But yeah, it's late. It has been a long day for me. But I tell you what, this is going to be a good episode. It is going to be a good episode. No doubt. A little saucy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, whenever we have the topic that we're going to be talking about (laughs) late at night, it it is what it is. But um, how you doing, man? I'm I'm doing pretty good, man. We've we've had some some interesting things happen around the Williams household. Yeah. Uh, what do you mean by that? Well, uh, so one of, one of the things from my past that will pop up from time to time is my my history in the culinary arts, uh, vis-a-vis uh, a catering business that we ran for a while. Yeah, and um, I'll just tell you, if you don't, if people out there don't know. You're you're a really good cook. Well, thank you. And I mean, I now I I profess to be a very good grill master, uh-huh. smoke person, right? Not, not like of the pipe, the piece pipe, okay, but of the grill smoking. You can do both at the same time. I, it's I, fine. I mean, I've I've been told, um, but <laughs> never partaken. No, okay. but um, I do I do enjoy that. But you're you're a very good cook all the way around. Which is why I will always be right about everything in the kitchen, <laughs> including well, the kitchen sink. <laughs> well, that that's not true, uh-huh. uh, according to Facebook. But what, uh, uh, anytime you have to say to prove your point, according to Facebook. Well, you I were think, according to Wikipedia. I think, so. <laughs> I think you've automatically discredited your entire point. <laughs> so... And here we go. <laughs> so back to your original point, <laughs> culinary arts and yeah, my, uh, my history business. Yeah. So uh, basically, we, we ran a very specialized catering business. Uh, my, my dad owns a, I think it's an 1863 Weber chuck wagon. It's legit. It is extremely legit. Um, it's, it's such a cool piece. Um, and, and we would do authentic cowboy cookery out of the chuck wagon. So everything in cast iron, everything on open fire. Um, uh, like we, we did like a really big event one time for like Warner Ladders. Um, we, we, we did several events, lots of weddings, uh, several restaurants, especially around rodeo season, once the wagon just to be there. Yeah. Um, but I mean, like just, I mean, just to be really brutally honest, it's a pain in the butt to haul that thing around. Well, it's in it's in a 16 foot enclosed trailer, right? Yeah, it's like, it's a 20 foot enclosed okay, trailer. Okay, 20 foot. Yeah. So it's even bigger than that. So it's it's kind of like it's taken apart. Right? Yeah. I mean, you have to put it together every time. Well, you no, we don't have to put the wagon together. Um, but there's so many parts and pieces that go with the wagon and it's so old. I mean, like we really take care in getting it in and out of the wagon. Sure. I mean, in and out of the trailer. Sure. Um, and, and so you kind of have to take your time. I mean, I mean it, it, it's well put together. Don't, it's not brittle or anything like that, but you just, you don't want to take any chances of breaking it. I mean, because this, here's, here's the thing. This thing was actually on a cattle drive at one point from Missouri to Texas. Goodness. In, in the 1800s. Wow. And, and, and so, and then it ended up in Texas and then somehow it ended up in our possession. <laughs> And it has the st- it has the original paint, man. And, and so like it's been well preserved. It's been yeah. really well taken care of. And so we didn't want to like not honor that. Sure. Um, even though we're, we're you know, and, and really we weren't actually doing anything in the wagon. The wagon was just the showpiece around which we were preparing the food. Okay. Um, and and we would do some really really cool stuff, man. I think my favorite thing that we did that was like a menu item out of that wagon was uh, grilled quail with blackberry bourbon sauce wow i mean just it was a phenomenal dish we did some other stuff that was really really good too i mean everyone really loved our chicken fried steak and you know all those other kind of like main home cooking kind of stuff that you would expect but yeah we did some high-end stuff too so anyway we've we've ceased and it's not that we couldn't you know build a legit business off of that we 
completely, it, it, would, it would have been really easy. It's just a lot of work yeah. that you have to be present for, and you really don't want to trust this thing to anybody else to take care of. Right. So we really haven't used it in a couple of years regularly. We, we busted out for regular events when, you know, people forked over the right mind of amount of cash. <laughs> um, so there was an opportunity that came up. Um, there's the, I think it's the flying W ranch. And, and I'm sorry if I'm getting this completely wrong. You wonderful people in Colorado. Um, but there's this place in Colorado and I, I think it's the flying W ranch. Um, maybe you can look it up or something, but, uh, I, I think it was last year or a couple of years ago that the entire place just got taken in Colorado forest fires. Hmm. Um, and it was a place that people would go to go experience a cowboy cookout and a sing along and and all these things that you might experience on Is a cowboy. Is that where drive. the Barty Wranglers were? I don't know. I have no idea. Hmm. I have very little knowledge about okay. what actually went it is, on there. There is a Flying W Ranch in Colorado Springs. Okay, yeah, that's in, it's in Colorado Springs. Um, hmm. uh, so anyway, and, that, and if that's if they're singers, then yeah, it's probably them. Okay. Um, well, due to just so you know, due to COVID nineteen. Their reopening has been moved to Friday, July 10th. That's them. Now you know. Yep. I found them. <laughs> so uh, it's, it's flyingw.com, by the way. Okay. Flyingw.com. Shout yep. out. There you go. Um, anyway, so here's, here's what's going on. When the forest fires happened, they lost everything. One of the things that they lost was their chuck wagon. Oh, man. Um, and the lady who... Um, now has the flying w ranch went to high school with my mom and they were friends on facebook and she'd seen a couple pictures of the the chuck wagon and she reached out and said hey would you know is there any chance you guys might be interested in you know having the chuck wagon be a you know semi-permanent fixture here at the ranch um because we lost ours it went down in flames um, we really want to reopen the ranch and, you know, start getting people back out here again. Would, would that be something that would interest you? And, and, and my dad had always, you know, had been, had, you know, for over the past couple of years, like, well, let's just sell it. Um, and, and so basically what, what they're doing is they're allowing them the use of the chuck wagon indefinitely. Really? So, so it is being moved yes. to the Flying W. To the Flying W. Interesting. To be used at their jamboree or whatever it is that they have cool. there. They have like a big meal and a show and, yeah. and things like that. And that's, then, so just, just so you know, that's very similar to what the Barty Wrangler Chuck, Ra Chuck Wagon thing is. But I, I just looked it up. The Barty Wranglers are in Durango. Okay. So it's a similar type of thing, only the Flying W is in Colorado Springs. Right. Bardi, they're in Durango. Okay. So forget Durango, go to Colorado Springs. <laughs> That's right, because that is where the homeowner's show chuck wagon is. That's even right. Even though it is the Williams chuck wagon. That's right. I'm calling it the homeowner's <laughs> show chuck wagon. You can go see the homeowner show chuck wagon. It's the, the, the 1863 Weber. Nice. Um, it's, it's, it's a really cool wagon. Um, uh, I don't know if they're going to use everything from it, um, but it has like a 40 foot fly. Wow. Um, that has all cedar posts. Um, you got to be a really tall dude to have a 40 foot fly. <laughs> just yeah. saying. That's, right. That's just a crotch. I <laughs> know. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it's, I mean, so in, anyway, it's, it's going to go, it's going to go live out there now. Cool. Um, and it's going to be part of the, the history. And, and, and apparently the Flying W was like a working ranch for years and years and years and yeah. years. And it's just part of Colorado history now. Um, and, and so we're, we're stoked that it's, it's going to be part of that heritage now in, uh, in, in moving on down the line and helping rehabilitate, you know, uh, what, what's going on in Colorado. And, I mean, like in, in similar, uh, news, like my, my aunt and uncle have a place out in Colorado, uh, near Durango, um, that almost burned to the ground recently. Really? I had some really bad forest fires out there and like, she was literally posting live video that's right on facebook and you that. could like she was standing on her porch and it's like there's the forest fire right there it's fixing to come yeah. get the house yeah i saw it it's unbelievable yeah and they were i mean they were staying on the property because they you know cultivate uh turkeys and elk and, and all these things that i mean that's primarily what their place is used for is for people to come and hunt yeah and have you know unique outdoor experiences um and man they about lost everything man um 
So, Crazy. which is just, I mean, like, you know, goofy burning laws in weird hippie states. <laughs> so, it's just a beef of mine, man. I mean, like, it's so stupid because, I mean, like, you, can, you can talk to any people from indigenous people's groups, and they used to do massive burnings to keep that kind of thing from happening. Sure. And, and now we've, we've developed this weird Smokey the Bear culture where, you know, like, granted, most morons don't need to be setting fires in the forest. True. Controlled burns are a completely different thing. And those right. are just aren't allowed. Right. And it causes these stupid wildfires. Yeah. So. It and it doesn't take much for, for that to happen. No, I mean, once it gets going, it's almost impossible to stop. Right. And like uh, in one of my aunt's videos, you can watch like a fleet of helicopters trying to dump water on this stuff, yeah. and it doesn't do anything. J no, nothing. No. It's crazy. It's infuriating. Yeah, and you know, I I've been backpacking in Colorado a lot mm -hmm. in my life, and it's always kind of this weird, um, this weird deal of like, are we under a burn ban? Are we not under a burn ban? Like, can I have a fire? Can I not have a right. fire? You know, all of those sorts of things, and. Which I understand because it's typically people like me mm -hmm. who come to Colorado as a foreigner, so to speak, <laughs> um, and and come and think, oh, I'm going to backpack in the Rockies or I'm going to go do this or whatever, and maybe don't know what's good. I mean, maybe you know how to backpack, but whenever it comes to like that kind of preservation of the land that you're on, right? maybe don't fully understand what's going on sure. but it winds up becoming a big deal but i i'm, I'm with you like the in fact forest fires in a lot of ways are are the way some of the, like in the redwoods mm -hmm. for example the way they spawn is through fire so it's mm. kind of a really really weird um thing but like fire is actually good for sure. those trees and so it's a it's kind of a weird concept here between how do you keep things safe and also not create hazardous yeah. spaces? You know, it's, it's bizarre. Well, you, you empower those that know what they're doing to do what they do. Yeah. And, you know, that's just been off the table for years and years and years in places like Colorado and California. And mm -hmm. like, imagine that. That's the place where we have like the worst, most horrendous forest fires yep. ever. Yep. It's true. So... It's true. Well, listen, um, that that's a cool story. Thanks for thanks for sharing. I, I'm uh, I'm excited that it's going to kind of have a home for a little while at least. Yeah, and so um, my, my mom and dad get to go on a little adventure to Colorado, and uh, they're going to go meet. Um, uh, well, well, we'll see what happens. I mean, I'm apparently, there's supposed to be some several Colorado dignitaries at the opening of this thing wow. that they're going to be at uh, wow. to to sort of christen the the old Weber. So. How did, just real quick, how, how did they find out that your parents owned this chuck wagon? Uh, because uh, my mom went to high school with the gal that owns it, oh. and she saw pictures on her Facebook profile okay. of us doing stuff with the wagon. And like it's, it's, it's no big secret over the years. I mean, if you, if you find us on Facebook, I mean, you've probably seen pictures of us in front of the, the wagon. Yeah. Um, we, you know, we used to do a ton of events with it. Uh, particularly around rodeo time. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and so it was, it was no big secret. Most ever, I mean, most people that know us know that we have it because they've probably been to an event with it. Sure. Um, except you, you've never been invited. Well, that's because y'all don't like me that much. It's so. the red. It's well, that's something, <laughs> <laughs> but that leads us right into our topic for of course, today. Naturally, naturally, we are still on our series of the three most important items in a room. Yep, the top three. The top three, uh, according to me and according to you. The <laughs> most authoritative <laughs> there could possibly ever be in regards to all rooms in your house. Yeah, and, and when there's a debate mm -hmm. of whether or not one of us is right, we just check Wikipedia, we obviously. Go to, the ne go to the internet. And go, and between Wikipedia and Facebook, we will solve the problem. But not Twitter. But No, well... Does Twitter actually exist? Twitter can suck it. Yeah. Well, yes, they can. Take that, little bird. <laughs> <laughs> little blue bird. <laughs> uh, so we are headed. So we started out with the kitchen, uh -huh. and then we went to the living room. Now we are headed to the bedroom, 
And when the I bedroom. say the bedroom, I'm talking about the master bedroom. Uh-huh. Easy. Now, well, Easy. Why? Because this is this is a controversial topic now. Well, it is. So we live in a day and time <laughs> when 2020 is the most ridiculous uh, year to have mm, ever happened. Right. Between, I mean, there were all kinds of things that were happening at the beginning of the year that people just have completely forgotten about. Right. Big, like big deals. Big stuff. Yeah. Big stuff. Then COVID happens. Uh huh. And then like murder hornets were here for a second. Right. And I got rid of those. Yeah. You. You. Figured out how to tell everybody. I mean, that was a really... You had a video that you put up, and you like pretty much solved all of the world's problems. That was such a stupid one. <laughs> they found one dead one. Yeah. Yeah. So, anyway, it, it they were here for, for a minute. And then... Um, Everyone's asking for him to come back right now. Have you seen stuff like that? We're yeah. like, bring back the murder hornets. Yeah, could, could we get like, back to this? Let's slow that roll for <laughs> yeah. just a second, all right? Like, we really don't want them here, no. but like... Moving on. <laughs> Moving on. So, um, so then we have the whole racist thing mm-hmm. that has really gained a, an um, enormous amount of traction, and and much of it for good reason. Sure. I mean, definitely. Um, but in in and amongst all of that, we've we've had riots and we've had you know just crazy protests, and some are peaceful, some aren't, and so. All of this, and now we've got more COVID happening. Like, right. Uh, but in and amongst all... Don't okay. forget, I don't know if you saw the story, meth gators. Uh, I, I did not see the story. You haven't seen about meth gators? No, I have, did not Dude, see this the is story like, about This is gators. like my favorite 2020 oh. thing yet. Okay. And I, I need to go back and read the actual article. Um, but I, and I, I'm, I'm guessing it's in Florida. <laughs> That's uh, where most of the... That's where most of the gators are. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, but apparently because there's been so many raids, people have flushed so much meth down the toilet that the gators have <laughs> begun consuming the meth <laughs> and they're now a more enraged and aggressive gator oh, than they were before. <laughs> It, and so now people, we have murder gators. The murder gators. <laughs> the meth murder gators. <laughs> so oh, no, there, there. I mean, like there, there actually was like an actual news story about this, and goodness, I just remember seeing like a meme about this where like the guys doing like the uh, uh, what? Do, what do you call it when everybody puts the money in the pool? Uh, uh, I, uh, 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 I don't know a raffle, something like that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. What what is it? What you, I guess it's a pool. You do like uh, yeah. a like a like a betting pool. Yeah. And like it's a guy's like with his finger up, and he's like, "Who had meth gators <laughs> for twenty twenty? That's funny. <laughs> well, you know, and and not only that, not, not right now we got like the the Sahara dust coming in, like yeah. Which FYI, everyone, that happens every year, every, every year. But but people are like, hey, what are the craziest things? And I'm kind of like, hey, listen. I grew up in in West Texas. Have you ever heard of a haboob, y'all? <laughs> haboob? Because if you do, you know what a haboob is? Uh, no. It's like, but like ten years ago, I didn't know what cleachy was either, and I know what that <laughs> is now. So I, I I feel like I'm gonna <laughs> learn something else that I didn't, I can't unknow. <laughs> so so a haboob. Imagine imagine like a is it like a uh, boob on a man? N- <laughs> <laughs> it's like a nubbin. <laughs> I got a boob. <laughs> Who <laughs> Chandler had a nubbin? <laughs> so no, 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 completely different. Haboob. Uh, imagine. Um, I just lost the name. What? What is the like the massive tidal wave that happens in, um, in like Japan and uh, like a um, what is it called? I know it's not, not not a tidal wave. No, but it's a, a um, it's a monsoon. No, it's not the way it is. What is it called? Uh, we're the I'm, worst. <laughs> it's late, y'all. It is 11, 12 p.m. right now. It is late. Anyway, y'all all know what I'm talking about. Typhoon. Uh, typhoon. There you go. All right, so imagine that, uh-huh. but a dust storm. Right. It's like this massive cloud of dust that you can see just coming, and it's like a million miles tall is what it feels like. Right. And it just sweeps over the city. It is this... It is crazy. You need to go. And the best thing Google. they could come up with is ha- was haboob. I, people in West Texas are crazy. All right? <laughs> I love them, but they're crazy. Got your mojo so. and your haboobs and your cleachy pit. 
Well, there is a glitchy. I just out there spoke to too. someone in West Actually, Texas, and they knew exactly yeah. what I was well, talking yeah. about. Well, we we met out of the glitchy pit multiple times <sighs> to to like hang out. So that was a thing. But anyway, so in, anyway, back to the topic and <laughs> um, master bedroom. Yeah, master bad. bedroom. So the 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 topic has taken this turn to where realtors are now being pushed to no longer call it a master bedroom. Right. It is now to be called the primary bedroom. Right. And so uh, we're, we're Craig and I are not here right now to <laughs> debate whether or not this is um, right, wrong, or just another turn <laughs> that we're taking at the but moment. But if you want to do so, you can always hit us up on Twitter. Right, yeah. Good, good luck because I'll tell you what we won't do. We won't interact with you through Twitter. You can interact with yourselves, but we will not be there interacting with you. Um, but, but it's just a. I mean, it's a. It's an interesting thing, right? Yeah. But uh, we. Well, and I think I think it's not just real estate agents. Like they're. I think they're they're pushing a lot of the the listing sources to do this. I mean, when you think about like the uh, Zulias and the Trulia, well, yeah. not. Not Zulia, Trulia, Zulily, Zulily right? Um, Realtor, whatever, yeah, whatever. like Redfin, yeah, all those places to like stop li- having that as an option, yeah, on the listing, right? What, well, which you know, I mean, so so you might be asking yourself, like, why is that a big deal? But well, the reality of it is, there are certain homes that have multiple masters, right, in them, multiple master bedrooms, so. Um, so I don't know. I don't know how they're <laughs> they're gonna yeah. navigate that if, whole thing. If they decide to 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 bend the knee on this issue, they're gonna have to figure out a better way to differentiate these these names and their nomenclature. Yeah. Um. So anyway, uh, not here to debate it. We're just gonna kind of call it what it's always been called up until like last week. <laughs> right. <laughs> the master bedroom. master bedroom. So we're, we're going with that. If we're wrong people, we're sorry. We formally apologize before we ever start. I don't apologize for nothing. Okay. We, uh, well, there was that one time <laughs> when, <laughs> if you didn't apologize, I'm not gonna... apologizing for anything in this episode. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Yet. That, yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. Give me time. If I make Kevin cry, then you might get an apology out of me. <laughs> Off air. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. It will not be recorded. So, um, you want to go first? You want me to go first? And we're going to, are these in order? Because I don't really have an order of mine. Yeah, we have to go in order. We have to go in they order. They have to be like the, the worst primary. to the best. Okay. Well, like our, uh, our worst top, you know, like it's like our number three. Okay. Down to the number one. Okay. Well, then in that case, you get to go first because I got a, <laughs> I got a number of mine in my head <laughs> about which is the most important. All right. So, so my my number three is going to be a high quality fan. Oh yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, for sure. And like I say, high quality fan because in my bedroom, uh, in my master bedroom, <laughs> um, <laughs> we don't we don't have any ceiling fans. Yeah, that's a that if you don't have a ceiling fan in your bedroom, mm-hmm. that's that's tough. Sure, um, but there's ways around this. Obviously. Um, and so we, we actually have a remote, certainly, <laughs> uh, we, we have a remote control oscillating, really cool fan. Okay. Uh, is that, it, is it Dyson? No. Okay. I, mean, I think it's Lasco. Okay. Oh yeah. 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 I think, yeah. um, we've had it for a number of years now. It's been a great fan. Um, and I, I, I will probably end up upgrading later on to actually wall mounted. Mm. And, and so part of the reason that we don't have uh, ceiling fan in our master bedroom is our ceilings are actually kind of low in our master bedroom. Right. Um, like even so low that even a ceiling hugger fan wouldn't really, no, wouldn't really it's work. Still, it's still yeah. pretty, um, pretty low. Right. Um, and there's not much to attach it to. Okay. Cause we have, um, we call it beadboard ceilings yeah. in a, in our master. Um, so it, yeah, but like having having a high quality fan that can actually push air because I like fans that like I can't actually feel the air moving when like I'm standing in front of it or near it just annoy the bejesus out of me. Mm. Um, like I like I I understand the concept behind the the big A fans. Yeah, um, but they annoy me. 
Because if yeah. I stand underneath them, I don't feel anything. Right. So I don't think that they're working. I know that they are. Yeah. I know that they are. <laughs> because otherwise, they're the, the world's biggest ripoff. Oh, yeah. Because um, they're thousands of dollars. Yeah. I mean, like, the big ones are like five, yeah. five Gs easy. They're ridiculous. Um, but anyway, I, I like one I can stand in front of and actually feel the air moving. Sure. And I like, I like an oscillating mm-hmm. kind, of, kind of a feel. Um, but, like, a good ceiling fan do the trick as well. Yeah. Um, and I, and, uh, in my kids' rooms, which is not the master bedroom, by the way, um, I actually, they have like a smaller fan. Okay. You know, like most ceiling fans have like, I forget what the, the, the inch on the span. Typically like, aren't in it like 42 inches, something that, like that. I you, think that could be totally true. And I'd mm. never know if you were lying. Well, um, I'm, I'm, that, that's a number. Yeah. I know that. I know that there's 52 inch fans, but those okay. are massive. And then yeah. there's like, I think a 64 inch fan. Yeah. But I'm trying to, I, I'm, I don't remember what like the standard. I think, I think it's you, 40. You, you I, could be totally right. I think it's 42, but. Right. I, we're going to go with that. Don't quote us. And then we're going to go to Wikipedia. Yeah. And, <laughs> and Facebook. And find out what's right. Um, but this is uh, much, much, much smaller, like half the size of a normal, regular size ceiling fan. And I like them because one, there's less chance of my kids sticking their fingers in it. Mm. Um, but it, it, to me, it feels like it pushes a lot more air. It has really fat blades on it and, okay. and it has good speed. Yeah. Um, so all, all that to say my number three ceiling fan. Okay. Hands down. Well, in, interestingly enough, I'm going to put a little honorable mention in here. Okay. Um, and I'm going to agree with you, but mm-hmm. I'm with a little bit of a caveat. Okay. We have a fan in our in our room that is essential. Uh, that if I didn't actually put it in my my top three, I, it would probably be a wrong. I would uh-huh. probably be wrong about this. Okay. Uh, it's that important, and it is simply for noise. Okay. We we have a fan. Like I went to Home Depot back, and we've had this fan for probably eleven or twelve years at this point. Sure. Um, I went to Home Depot and I said, "Hey, where where are your fans? I can't find them." They're like, "Oh, they're over on this aisle." Because I actually found someone at Home Depot to help me, which is unusual, right? <laughs> uh, Lowe's completely different conversation. Yeah. Were they an employee? <laughs> right? Yeah, I don't actually. I don't think so. They're just someone walking around with an orange shirt. Um, and so I went over to the fans, and they actually walked with me over there and. They were like, you know, I think I think these are like supposed to be quiet or whatever. And I was like, oh no 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 no, no, I want the loudest fan. Uh-huh. Which one's your loudest one? <laughs> they were like, what are you talking about? I'm like, I just need noise. Yeah. So, so we we have a fan that is in a corner, and it just kind of blends into the to the wall, and right. uh, it is simply for noise. And so whenever we go like on vacation or to other people's houses, like we use the app on our phone, like the white noise app, uh-huh. just because we like sleeping with just a little bit of noise going on. Sure. So we have a fan, not, not a sound machine. We don't prefer those, although the, I realize that's what the app is, but right. we prefer kind of that natural wind sound. So huh. as an honorable mention, there you go. All right. we, we actually uh, use uh, an Alexa dot. Oh, okay. When we when we travel in our room, we have like actually one of the full echoes. Uh-huh. Um, but we we say you know Alexa, ask thunderstorm sounds to loop. Oh okay. Um, and it just plays continuous thunderstorm sound. You can also do it for waves mm. like ocean sounds yeah. or rainforest noises. She has a plethora interesting of noises that she can loop. And now we know. Yeah. So all right, my number three. She might even have ceiling fan noises. I don't know. I, well, they don't typically make too much noise unless it's like a. Is that what yours like, does? No, I'm just saying like some old ones. They might make okay that, that sound. <laughs> it's one. It's obviously I, similar to a horror movie. <laughs> was, was, if that's what you're after, I mean, I can, <laughs> like whenever Jason is after you, I think that's the sound. You're trying to like dull the senses. Is that? <laughs> I guess okay. I don't know. All right, my number three big reveal <laughs> <laughs> for all that a lamp. A lamp. Yeah, because floor lamp, table lamp. What are we talking um, about here? I'm thinking like like for me, it's a side table lamp. Okay. Like so, so we we actually don't have a traditional side table, but we 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 have like side drawers, mm-hmm. kind of. It's like this four drawer chest, but it, it's small. Right. I mean, it's probably like twelve by twelve inch type of thing, but um, on each of our our stands mm-hmm. is a lamp, and so. You know, for us, there's a lot of times when we're in our bedroom and we don't need full light going on, you know, right. for whatever reason. And a lot of times we'll turn the light off, we'll read, 
you know, just by lamp light mm-hmm. rather than have the big light. Because a lot of times for us, we like to lay down and read or right. or do something. We still want some light going on, but we don't like the want the light glaring down on us mm. from the ceiling. So lamp light just kind of gives us some ambient light. It's not as not as hard. The other thing is like we we obviously our children go to bed quite a bit earlier than we do. But if we didn't have any lights on in our room, which our rooms are right next to our kids' room. Our room is next to our kids' room. And so if it would be really dark. And so if we just flipped on the the main light, it would be pretty bright. So at night we'll just turn those lights off on, leave the room, and that way Whenever we come in at night, there's still some light going on, but it's not like overpowering. Or anything, oh, do you, do y'all leave it on right? while you sleep? No, no, no. But just like while while they while while our kids are asleep, instead of turning the main light on so that it's not so dark when we walk in a room, we'll just turn on one of our lamps. I got you. So okay. we just got some ambient light going on. So for us, uh, a a nightstand lamp okay. is really important. Nice. Yeah. Are you using LEDs? Um, halogens. You know, we oh, oh, we it, got rocking my, in this lamp. So interestingly enough, just because it hasn't gone off, <laughs> it hasn't burned out yet. My lamp currently has a, a, a CFL in it. Okay. And uh, my wife's has an LED, but they're they're the warm white mm-hmm. uh, light because yeah. anything other than that's a little bit bright. So. I, I was totally opposed to LEDs until just recently. Like I feel like they just got it right where it it doesn't feel like a uh, fluorescent. Yeah, well, part of it is they figured out how to change the color of them. Mm-hmm. I, I think for so long they were bright, bright, bright. Yeah. And so now that you can get, really, you, you've got three different options. you get got the warm white, the cool light, and the daylight. Right. And, and of course, now there's all different. You, you can buy the bulbs. You can change color on an app, right? Yeah. Uh, which is pretty awesome. So, yeah, they, they're doing a lot of things right. I mean, whenever, whenever you can take a 120 or like a 100-watt typical bulb and it's like, five watts right that's that's huge you, i mean the amount of money you're saving you could leave that light on all day and yeah not because it, it wasn't working for a while there to, to appeal to my humanity and say but like think of all the electricity that you're saving i'm like yeah but it looks like crap in here oh and they were five thousand dollars right it was like one led bulb was like 20 bucks i'm like i'm not doing that i'm not, <laughs> I'm not paying oh i so so i'm gonna save 49 cents on my electricity bill for this 20 dollar bulb no pass but, yeah pass <laughs> but they figured some things out for yeah, they sure have. good on you scientific guy <laughs> right. or gal all right what's your number two my number two is uh I, I need an armchair in my in my bedroom oh so and i my my favorite chair in the entire house is actually in in my bedroom really yeah okay that's my favorite place it's uh you know like it's no knock on the rest of the furniture in my house but it's like the one place i know that i can go and i can sit and i can typically be quiet um and sure. and and read a good book and and just chill yeah um i I love having that armchair in my in my bedroom it's a must have for me now mm. now that now that i've had it yeah um and so i i have a, a similar setup where like i have my armchair a bookshelf right next to that I think we've talked before about how many bookshelves we have in the house, but then I have a, uh, a hanging lamp next okay. to that. And so it's just, it's just kind of like my little reading nook that I have in the, in the master bedroom. Um, it's, and it's just a big, uh, leather armchair. Yeah. No recline function or anything like that. It has an ottoman, yeah. um, with it, but like it's, it's, it's strictly for sitting and reading. Yeah. And you've got like a little interesting nook in, in your bedroom that, uh, that really fits really nicely into. Yeah. So it makes sense. Uh, what else would you really do with that space other than make a little sitting area? But, but that's obviously become important on yeah. top of all that. So it's 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 been a nice feature that we didn't. I mean, like honestly, we, we never we've never really had a bedroom big enough to have that. And once we kind of rearranged the furniture just right, it made space for that. And it's it's been a nice feature to have in there. It's it's almost like a smaller living room just for us. Mm. Yeah. Um, and so that's that's been really nice. Sure, sure. Um, okay, cool. Well, my number two is. Um, going to be a f- uh, a, a floor length mirror. Oh. So like a full body mirror um something that whenever we're getting dressed we can look and go okay. 
this is going to be okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So, so for us, what, what's what, the one that we have? Um, so it's freestanding. Yes. Okay. The one we have is freestanding. Um, my, my mother-in-law actually made it. Oh, cool. So yeah, it's, it's really, really neat. Uh, she made it out of, um, out of, so the, I'm going to guess glass. Well, there is some glass in there, <laughs> but what she made the frame with is, um, the, there's an old, there was old basketball, uh, court, the wood from the old basketball court at their high school right, yeah. was taken out and she wound up with a lot of it. Like oh. I think they were kind of giving it away or whatever. And she went and got a bunch of it. And so we actually have multiple pieces in our house that she has made from from the some floor, of that yeah. wood from the from this court, and um, so so she made the frame out of it, and it's you know it's got a hinge with with legs on the back of it, and um, and then a, a piece of mirror glass mm. mirrored glass in it, and it's nothing fancy, but it matches our furniture because all of our furniture in our in our bat bedroom is black. And okay, so she just painted it black. And for us, it, it's it's become one of those things that's like I, I can imagine one of these days, like our daughter will probably want that mirror, mm-hmm. yeah, you know, because she'll remember it for forever and ever type of thing, and it's made really well. And so for us, it's a it's actually a piece of furniture mm-hmm. in, in the room, but it it kind of takes a, a prominent place um, in a corner, just kind of that's that's what that corner is for. Yeah, which I don't know, I know that probably kind of sounds weird to to a lot of people, but. Um, you know, for us, it's, it's nice. I mean, a, a lot of times in a bathroom, for example, in, in your, your master ensuite, suite, whatever, um, you, you don't typically have a floor length mirror. So right. how are you going to see below your waist if you don't really know what you're looking at? So, yeah. um, do you find you mismatch your shoes a lot there, Kev? Um, my chacos sometimes <laughs> I do <laughs> every once in a while. <laughs> you got multiple colors. You're yeah. Right. No, now I, w- I will tell you. Let, let, let's take a little sidebar for a second uh-huh. and talk about mirrors for just a minute. Okay. Um. So I, I've I've done some mission trips mm-hmm. uh, before to like Central America, and um, I've been to Honduras a couple of times. I've um, I've been to a uh, couple of different places actually, but um, so Honduras specifically is is a place that sticks out to me. Because I remember at one point there was we were working in this kind of really really remote village. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I, it's it would take me a while to explain how remote this place is, but um, it to walk to the nearest little place to get any groceries is a three and a half hour walk mm-hmm. one way. So it's a whole day journey just to kind of go to the. To, store, to get yeah. groceries at all, um, which is why they they actually grow most of their food. Yeah. Uh, but um, this we we had a pickup and we were we were kind of going in and there were some some little girls. They were probably my daughter's age, like four four to eight years old, somewhere around in there. And they we we told them to get it. You know, hey, go ahead and get in the truck. You know, we'll we'll take you where we're going. And it was obvious the way they were giggling. They had never been in a vehicle before. <laughs> okay, I mean, think about that for a minute. They'd never been in a vehicle before, and and then they saw the rearview mirror, and I don't think they'd ever seen what they look like. Mm. I mean, can you imagine? That's crazy. That they don't know what they look like because they've never seen a mirror because they don't. I mean, this remote village just doesn't have that kind of thing. I mean, they that the reason we were there is to build latrines for them. Because right. they don't have a place to go to the bathroom, and so, I mean that's how that's how primitive they were living, and so, just a bizarre thing to think that someone eight years old and and probably some of their parents have no idea what they look like. Mm. Isn't that bizarre? That's bizarre. Okay, well, sidebar. What's your number two? You already went to number two. I did right? my number two. What's your number one? No, number one. Before we get to our number one. What you need most in your house, Kevin, before you get to number one. Or number two. Or number two. <laughs> is a good plumber. That's right. <laughs> the, the segue was so perfect. It was. It was yeah. You're almost welcome. as if we planned it. <laughs> but Which we didn't. Which those of you that know us know that we plan nothing. <laughs> nothing. 
That's right. Paul the Plumber. Other than being partnered with great companies like Paul the Plumber, guys, right. if you if you need good plumbing service in your home, give Paul a call. Give Deborah a call at 832-521-3252. You can book them online. You can book them on Facebook and the ever-famous virtual inspection. The most amazing thing ever invented. Yep. Well... Close. Close. Yeah. I mean, the technology that provides that is probably pretty amazing, but the, the fact that they leveraged it, <laughs> right. incredible. Well, it's it's just incredibly smart. <laughs> yeah. So if you, can't, if you haven't seen it yet, there's the logo. Give Paul a call. That's right. It's a great sponsor of the show. Thank you, Paul. Yes, sir. My number one. Am I am I going? Am I going first? You're going first. So th- this this is actually a uh, so you just got to have a good mattress. Uh, at the end of the day, yeah, you got to have a high quality mattress, and this is this is very close to home for me right now, because uh, I've been going to the chiropractor for the last two mm. months mm. Uh, because my back is all out of sorts, and okay. uh, we have determined that it has to do with my failing mattress. Okay, um, I have literally worn like a divot into this thing. Sure. And my, my chiropractor has literally written me a prescription for a new mattress. Oh my goodness. So the the problem is. Um, we're not supposed to make any new purchases right now because we're actually in the middle of a refinance. Mm. <laughs> and so, Whoops. Um, so we're, we're just, we're biding our time. I've been going to the chiropractor like every 14 days and he's been adjusting me and getting me, I, I'm, I'm feeling a lot better. Thank you, Chad. If you're listening, you're amazing. <laughs> you made me feel like a brand new human being. Um, but here very soon, we're, I'm going to go see our, our, our mutual friend, uh, William. Will Underwood. Yeah. And he's going to hook me up with some fancy schmancy new highly technological comfortable mattress thingy <laughs> and I'm going to be even feeling better. Yeah, so this is this is a topic that is tough because yeah. um it, it was time for my wife and I to get a new mattress. Uh I don't know, 5 or 6 years ago. Mm-hmm. And so we we started looking and which that's a good question, man. Like how often should you rotate that thing out? Well, <sighs> I mean, like, that's probably it, not a question uh, for you and I to answer. I mean, like, we really need to bring like a professional in and like tell us what we need to do because. Well, let's get William on the show. We're idiots. What? Why have we not gotten William on the show? I don't know. Uh, okay, William, we're gonna get you on the show. I don't think he likes us. Well, I, that, he he doesn't like me, so well, it's probably he can you. sit on this side of the table. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, when when we were so so a lot of times it seems like you can kind of go with um, not just warranty because a lot of times warranty is like a year maybe yeah. three years on these things, but kind of what I was told whenever we were looking, it's like sometimes it's like seven to eight years okay. is typically what you get out of mattress. Um, but it really depends on what you get. Um, so for example, you know, nowadays, you know, used to is like you have to flip your mattress every year or six months or whatever it is. Well, now mattresses are kind of built to be where they are. Yeah. So, so you don't really, most mattresses, you know, obviously your traditional older style of mattress, spring mattresses, those kind of things, you can still flip those. But they've gone to such different technology these days on how they build mattresses that you're not supposed to flip them. Right. And so, you, I mean, you, you can spend a little bit of money or a lot of money. But one of the things that I have, and this is a question that I'd really like to ask William, is like a lot of times whenever you go into a mattress store – you lay on a mattress, you buy it, you mm-hmm. take it home, and it feels different. Mm-hmm. Because that mattress has been laid on by mm-hmm. however many people, and it's kind of been worn in a little bit. A little bit, yeah. And, and we actually had a mattress store tell us, like, well, you kind of got to wear it. Like, there's a little bit of a wear in period. And we're like, well, this is horrible. <laughs> I, don't, I don't need to wear like, I don't want to have to I go need to the, it now. I, Can I have yeah, that one? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, trade me for that one. And, like, why why is it that? It's going to take me, you know, a month before I'm going to actually like this thing. Like, I'm going to hate life for yeah. the next month. So we actually took it back. <laughs> I'm not I'm not joking. Like, I called him. I'm like, can I can I take this back? And they're like, yeah, you can. I was like, all right, coming tomorrow, you know? <laughs> and, and so we took it back. And so I told my wife, I said, okay, babe, like, I know you don't want to, I don't, I know you don't want to do this. And she, because she had told me over and over, I'm like, we need to go to the sleep number store. We need to go to the sleep number store. Mm-hmm. And she was like, I'm not spending that much money on a mattress because they're expensive. And I said, let's just go and see. She's got a bad back too. Mm-hmm. Um, so 
I'm like, listen, you can adjust both sides of this thing. Like, let's just go try it out. If we hate it, we'll walk out. But if we don't, we'll, we'll just kind of figure it out. Right. So we go and see. This is why William done one. He'd slap you. Oh, oh yeah, because he doesn't <laughs> work for sleep number. Uh, and and so I I we walk in and of course we find the mattress that we love uh-huh. and and we order it and it was like twenty five hundred dollars. Okay. For this mattress now. The other one that we had purchased was like 800 900 something like sure. that. So my wife's sitting here going, oh my goodness, this is so much money. But I told her this. like, Think about this for a minute. Typically, if you're getting the amount of sleep that you should be getting every night, which is a really big health thing. like You should be sleeping. For, for most adults, you have to get a minimum of seven. Eight is recommended. Right. So if, if you were to spend eight hours in bed like you should. Mm-hmm. That's a third of your life. Yep. One third of your life. So, so, I, so I put it to her like this. Do you spend a third of your life in your vehicle? Most likely not. Mm-hmm. And how much are you spending on a, a truck, for example? You could easily spend $50,000 on a truck. Easy. And you're going to keep it for how long? Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. For most people, like you might get five or six years out of it before you go buy another fifty thousand dollar truck. Right uh, now, that's not me. <laughs> I've <laughs> kept my truck for now seventeen years, but I'm abnormal when it comes to that. But this mattress that we bought for twenty five hundred bucks that we're going to spend a third of our life on, it's got a twenty five year warranty on it. Mm-hmm. Twenty five years. So they're saying this thing should last a a minimum of 25 years because right. we will warranty it for that long. Now, you're not keeping a vehicle for 25 years, most likely. No, more than likely and, not. And 2500 bucks is a drop in a bucket compared to, you know, and, and we're talking major health stuff here. Like, when when I had ACL replacement <laughs> or reconstruction surgery, it was way more than 2500 bucks. Like, you spend money on your health a lot of times, whether it's food, yeah. whether it's these sorts of things. So, my deal is like buy a good mattress, mm-hmm. whether it's Sleep Number or Sealy or whatever brand, Posturepedic, I don't care what it is. Buy the mattress that is good for you, for your health. Yeah. It's super, super important. Yeah, and I forget which episode it was when we had Dr. Zeno in, but I, I remember that being like one of his like primary things was like, look, spend the money on the things that matter because at the end of the day, you know, you're almost always going to regret not getting the best quality that you can afford for the situation that you're in. Yeah. Um, so anyway, I, I, I love that. Yeah. So. Good stuff. And we spent a lot of time talking about mattresses just now. Well, it's, it's a, it's, it's a huge. worthwhile topic. Yeah. Um, I, I have no idea which one I'm going to get, uh, right now. The one that I have, I've, you know, enjoyed for the time that we've had it. Yeah. Um, but it's time for a new one. Sure. Um, and so I'm keenly aware of how important that is in my bedroom right now. Yeah. Good uh, stuff. So. All right. Number one, Kev, what you got? Number one. Probably not on everybody's list, but for me, room darkening curtains. Oh. Yes. Now, this has been something that we've had in our house since we've been married, is we want we want a dark room. Mm-hmm. And it, it's interesting because my wife doesn't like pitch dark whenever, okay. whenever she's sleeping. She likes to have... Like especially in our bathroom, she wants to be able to like go in there and see a little bit, mm-hmm. you know? Well, she doesn't like pitch black, but in the mornings, the the sun comes in, mm-hmm. and if you don't have some good, especially you also have a lot of windows across we, the back of the house. That, that's the other thing. Our entire we have an entire wall, like like the long wall, <laughs> like, yeah. you know, uh, whatever the dimensions of our room, the longer wall is completely windows. Yeah, and so uh, now now it faces west, so um, that helps, but mm-hmm. still. The sun, the sunlight's going to come in, right? And without room darkening curtains, it would be a nightmare to try to sleep past like six. Now, are those clock. are those curtains that you guys bought, or did you make them? No, we bought them. Okay, uh, you know, I think we bought them at like Target. Even okay, they're, they're not like any super special high end, but they're black, which works really well in our room because we got black furniture. So mm-hmm. you know, the black works and. Um, but they're just a real heavy, thick material that honestly, light does not come through. If if you if you have those things closed during the day, 
you could easily think, oh, this is easy to take a nap in. So yeah. um, for us, having some good curtains that block out light so that, you know, you don't, you're not waking up at the crack of dawn, you know, when the roosters are crowing. <laughs> uh, now, our kids wake up super early, but mm. they know not to come in our room. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, and so, yep, for us, room darkening curtains. Nice. Yeah. I, I can see the value in that. I mean, it, it's it's nothing special, but when, when I it makes thinking, a big difference. It does. Like whenever I think about, okay, what are the things in my room that that I need uh-huh. to enjoy the sleep? <laughs> <laughs> what what are they? And good dark curtains for my room is really important. Now, if we if we wanted to buy a house that didn't have lots of windows, probably regular curtains would probably be fine. Yeah, or even blinds maybe, but. Not in the house that we live in now, <laughs> for sure. So. Yeah, I, I'm not a big fan of blinds. I mean, because like you gotta you gotta turn them the right way just to send the sunlight. And even then, like it can I bounce know. off and make the room bright. Yeah. So it's just not a it's not an efficient use. No. Of of the space sometimes. It's not. So I mean, it can definitely make it like darker. Sure. Than it when it would have been, but yeah. So. Which, by the way, like, I don't know if I talked about this, but I, like, I got these new blinds for my bathroom window that have no string. Yeah, you told me. Did, did we yeah. talk about that on the show already? I think you did. So, I love those things, man. Yeah. I love the, just the clean look of them. Yeah, it's like, it's like almost hydraulic. Like, you, like, t- like push up on it and they, yeah. they raise, right? And, and like, no, no cat is going to hang himself in a string. <laughs> Not that I would ever have an indoor cat, <laughs> but, like... <laughs> And if you did, hanging itself yeah, would be fine. That would be fine. <laughs> He'd deserve it. That's right. Shouldn't have been in my house in the first That's place. That's right. <laughs> exactly. But, but yeah, that's a, well, I, th- I think that's a that's a diver- very diverse list, Kevin. I, I, we, I said before we started that our lists would be different. Yeah. I, felt, I felt pretty confident of it. So, uh, you know, for me, I, I kind of took, for granted the the fact that we're going to have a bed uh-huh. you know i mean you you were specific with the mattress i think that's good we're, you're going to have a bed mm-hmm. you're probably going to have you know some sort of chest of drawers or or maybe a you know a, a dresser of some sort but really like we were talking about this on the home builder show a little bit like a lot of a lot of people are now building their master closet mm-hmm. or primary closet if you want to call it sure um but your main closet, big, and putting, you know, like like a big chest of drawers in there, or mm-hmm. you know, like a built in, a, a built in of some sort yeah. that like all of your clothing is in another room, so your your room becomes more of a a presentation, a beautiful, yeah, you know, like a luxurious, very very kind of peaceful place, and it's not filled with like cabinets and yeah. drawers and that kind of we, thing. We we have a chest of drawers. In our bedroom. Okay. It's completely unnecessary. Mm. Like, I don't use it for clothes. Oh. It's for other things. Okay. Um, like, our primary source of clothing storage is our Alpha system. Oh, yeah. Alpha's great. Um, and I love it. Um, that's where our drawers are. That's where our clothes are. Um, yeah, we don't really use our bedroom for clothing storage. Yeah. Yeah. At all. So... Well, and I love it. I'm interested to know what other people's top three are. Yeah. Because maybe they're different. Unless you're boring. Well, obviously. <laughs> like, if you're boring. Or if your answer includes away. any of the above. But, Bean bag, lava <laughs> lamp. <laughs> Ain't, what, pet what rock. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like a chia pet. Chia, yeah. Like a... Like what are they called? Like a a, a dream catcher? <laughs> if, you, if you got a dream catcher in your in your bedroom, any sort of mango paraphernalia, <laughs> <laughs> like I mean, rabbit's feet. Yeah. If you got a rabbit's foot in your, I'm just we're not anywhere. interested. Yeah, like if you if you're if you're hanging things from the mirror in your in, on your dresser, you know, like like old high school yeah. awards. <laughs> or as our friend Tanya mentioned, a swing. Oh yeah, yeah. If, if that's it, I mean, whatever. Yeah, I, and you can list it because you'll be outed. Yeah, but <laughs> <laughs> prove it with pictures. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> prove it with Please pictures. Please don't. Yeah, polls. You know, don't don't. <laughs> uh, okay, people have things like maybe you still got shag carpet in here. In that your would bedroom. be awesome. <laughs> Show it to us. I could shock the ever living out of somebody with those things. <laughs> yeah, could light up a light bulb. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> that's funny. So yeah, tell us what your top three are. That's that's great. If you have commentary on the whole master versus primary, you know, we're we're willing to listen, just not on Twitter. And no, take uh, it to Twitter. Please yeah. take it to Twitter. Please take it to Twitter. We're not- <laughs> uh, good luck. Um, but yeah, we're uh, we're we're glad you downloaded the episode. Hopefully, it's been interesting for you. And uh, if you haven't already, uh, go ahead and subscribe to our channel. That yep. would be great mm-hmm. um, on iTunes or uh, now it's Apple Podcast, Apple or, Podcast, or Google Podcast. Yep. There too. Um, Stitcher, Stitcher is a great Spotify. one. Spotify. Yep, all good. And now uh, we are really stepping up our our YouTube presence mm-hmm. in a big way. And so, um, starting get with all this the episode, ugly. Yeah, starting with this episode. I'm going to be putting a link in our sh- in our show notes here to subscribe to the YouTube channel, oh. and that way you can I can you, finally subscribe you, absolutely, um, and subscribe to our to our YouTube channel. That way, anytime we put something up, which we we're putting content up in between our shows. So. Yeah, there's not just like the episodes up every week. There's there's clips. There's other things that are going up. Right. Um, that you'll probably want to check out. Yeah. So, you know, and, and, you know, subscribe, click the bell so that you get notified whenever uh, a new video goes up. And uh, so, yeah, uh, leave us a review on, on iTunes. That would be fantastic. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's, that's kind of all the plugs that yeah. I've got. Um, thanks for downloading the show. We hope you enjoyed it. Tell your friends about it. And, you know, we're here every Tuesday, right, Craig? Every tuesday every single tuesday thanks for joining us until next time we'll see you later see you